Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.com with another video in our series as we start to construct our COA application. So we pretty much got all our pieces of COA kind of connected and working. Um, so now the next step is to get a, our connected to a database. So what you want to do is open up an account at MongoDB uh, Atlas. So just Google MongoDB Atlas, uh, get a free account, and you can open up a free database. Okay, so let me just go back to the main screen here. So what you'll do is you'll set up a project, and in that project, you're going to create a new cluster, and you're going to create it of the sandbox type. These are free. You can have one sandbox per project. Although, really, one database, you can create a lot of, basically, if you're just creating, like, apps for your portfolio, uh, just one database on your cluster will be more than enough to handle everything you need. Now, if you're new to Mongo, um, you're not necessarily going to need to know all the ins and outs of Mongo to create your application. But the main thing to know right now is some of the terminology. So basically, this sandbox here, this SEI cluster, think of that as one big giant database. Now, in that database, I can have a lot of mini databases, and then each collection of information in the database is called a collection. So like, kind of like how, if you've ever worked with SQL, you had uh, databases, tables, and records. So basically, you had a database, and the database was made up of a bunch of tables, kind of like Excel spreadsheets, and then each row was considered a record. Well, here, you have collections. So collections are more similar to like a table in SQL, and each entry, each piece of information inside the collection Referred to, referred to as a document. So basically, in your cluster, you're going to want to, you know, you're going to have a database and all this stuff. You really don't need to play with any of this. You just need to create your cluster. So once you have your cluster, what you need to do is get your information to connect to it. So you're going to get this click here on connect. You're going to click connect your application. And then here you're going to get a URL. And you're going to Basically, read it. You need to put in some information in there. You have to create like a username and password for your database, and put it into your URL. And then what I would do is I would copy that into an environment variable um, in your .env file, okay? Because that's you know necessarily want people seeing the information to connect to your database in your code, because then they can connect to your database and start putting information you don't want in there. But once you have that URL, that's all you really need from here. Now we can go back to our code. Now, what you need to do is we need to download Mongoose. So you're going to add another package through NPM. So NPM I Mongoose to download Mongoose. What Mongoose is, it's sort of, it's, it's the glue between JavaScript and Node versus your Mongo database. So Mongoose has all the tools that are needed for your program to connect to that Mongo database. You have a Mongo Atlas and to be able to take information from there, store information there, and do everything you need. So we'll explore how to do that over the next, or how to set that all up over the next couple uh, videos. But the first step is to um, connect to the database, which is going to require all this code right here. Okay. So first, we got to bring in Mongoose. So again, const Mongoose. So we're going to create a Mongoose variable, and we're going to require Mongoose. So this creates a Mongoose object that we can use. Now, what we need is a way to something that's going to connect to the database. So we're going to say db equals mongoose.connection. So what really what db is it represents the status of our connection. That's why we refer to it down here. Okay, so we can check what the status of our connection is anytime we want um, through this db object, which is a mongoose.connection. It's the status of your connection with Mongo. Host is that URL. Okay, so that URL you got from Mongo Atlas, that's going to be our host that we're going to connect to. But again, we're going to store that in our .env file. So then I can call it by using this variable here. So technically, when I say process.env, it then goes look in your .env file, and then I named it host. So you can call it whatever you want, but in my .env file, I said host equals the URL. So I'm my variable, so that's going to go look for that host variable in that .env file, and that which is my you know URL that I got from Mongo. 
Now this object over here isn't really anything that does anything in particular. You don't really even need it, but if you don't add it, it's going to throw you a bunch of like warnings about like deprecated parts of and deprecated just means it's not being it's not being continued no more support. It's not going to really be useful in the future parts of Mongo. So if you want to avoid those warnings, just literally copy this object. So I just call it DB update. It just kind of updates it so you don't get those deprecation warnings. So use new URL parser, true. Use unified topology, true. Use find and modify, false. What do these things mean? I don't really know, but it makes the warnings go away. Okay. And then mongoose connect, this is the actual, we're calling the function mongoose connect, which is actually going to make the connection to the database. So it needs two things. It needs, where's it connecting to? That's our host that we created up here. And it also it takes the object, which takes all these different all these pieces, and does stuff that makes those warnings go away. Cool. So, but how do I know for sure that I'm connected? I would it would be nice to get like a little warning to know that something went right or something went wrong, other than just hoping that everything's working just fine. So that's what this is. These are just like little messages to you that you can get in your console using that DB object. You know, because again, DB represents the status of your connection. So when I say db.on, it's going to be like what it's basically going to bring forth or act based on my status of my connection. So if my connection is an error, it's going to say error, db not connected. So that'll pop up on my screen and I'll know, okay, I'm not connected. Something went wrong. I need to go figure out what's wrong. If it is connected, it'll say connected to Mongo. Yes. If it gets disconnected, It'll say Mongo is disconnected, and as, when the connection first becomes open and ready to be used, it'll say connection made. Okay, and these will happen when we run our server. So just to show you that that works, okay, so again, you're going to want this code exactly the way I have it here. I mean, again, the variables could be named differently if you want, but it's just easy to keep it all the same. And let's queue up our server. So node dot index dot js index so node index dot js okay so we see we got our message that it, it's listening on port 1985 and then here we got our message that we got connected to the mongo database so it's successfully connected and the connection is open okay so now we're able to start if our program does so we're able to send uh, request for information, send information to feed into the database, uh, we're good to go. So that's pretty cool. So now, basically, we kind of have all the pieces in place. We have our database where we can pull and in, put information. We have our router set up, our views set up, um, our static folder set up. Basically, we have everything we need to really just start building out an application. I know this was a lot of work, but now you have your boilerplate. And again, you can copy, kind of copy and paste this. There's going to be one or two more things I want to do in the next couple videos just to get it just right as we start to build things. Um, we are going to do something called a schema in Mongo. So we'll do that in a separate video, but we can start setting it up now. So that would be in the models folder. So in the models folder, if you want to set up a new file, we're going to call it blog.js. That's going to set up our, basically what it is, it's going to create a template for what a blog post should look like. So that way, when we send information to Mongo, it'll be like, okay, I only want information that looks like a blog and I'm gonna put it in this particular collection in the database we connected to. We'll set that all up in a future video. And also, like I said, between now and the last video to edit your header and footer, to start building out your template, let's show you how this one's coming out. Okay, so let's get to Chrome. Let's refresh. So again, we haven't created any content yet, so this part's empty, but again, using that... Oh, oh is the server not running? I don't think the server's running. Do, 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 do. Oh, I closed it. Even, even better. Okay, CD... Oh, no. Um, yeah, CD projects... CD things go yep app CD first go app and node index dot js cool 
Okay, server is running. Now let's restart that back up. Boop. So what I did is I, I, I just pulled in the materialize CSS framework and just quickly put up a header and a footer. Just so that way you see it's, you know. And basically anything we're going to create going forward will appear in this middle area. And the cool thing about using materialize or bootstrap or something like that, it's kind of already responsive. So basically it's, it's already kind of mobile responsive. And if you wanted to test mobile responsiveness, just so you know, you hit control shift I. And again, you bring up those Chrome developer tools. What you will see is this little button over here. And now you can go into this screen where you can test different size screens. So like this is an iPhone, how it would look like on an iPhone 5, how it would look like on an iPhone 6, how it would look like on an iPad. You can get an idea for how the website would look like on different devices. And you already looked at the elements here where you can kind of examine the different thing elements on the website right now. So you can kind of see what's in the head tag. You can kind of see, and again, all of this is from the templates we made with Nunjux. So Nunjux rendered it all as if it's one HTML file, which is what's the beauty of using a templating engine. But then over here you have consoles. So if I actually had, I could, in my job, my front end JavaScript files, I could see like console log stuff here and do all that stuff like I'm doing in Node. So that's it for now. Um, I will see you guys in the next video. Have a great day and enjoy.